What's your favourite season? Do you like the summer when the sun stays up and you can stay outside for longer? Maybe you love the springtime when all the flowers start coming out? Or winter when it snows and you can have epic snowball fights? <laughs> Guys, I think we've got him cornered. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just wait till they see this. Huh? What? What? Check this out. Oh, come on. That's not fair. <laughs> oh. Tell me your favourite season in the comments below. Mine is the fall, when the leaves drop and you can go crunching through them. But have you ever wondered why we get the seasons at all? In some places, like Alaska, the temperature can change by more than 150 degrees Fahrenheit between summer and winter. Whereas in other places closer to the equator, the seasons aren't all that obvious. In Brazil, the temperature barely changes between January and December, and the summer is just the period when it's a bit less rainy. Love them or hate them, the seasons keep on changing, and they're all down to how our planet moves around the sun. Let me break it down for you. Our home planet, Earth, is a massive ball of rock floating through space. But we're not wandering aimlessly between the stars. Earth is actually moving in a very regular way. First of all, it's spinning, like this. One complete rotation takes 24 hours or one day. Everything is turning around an imaginary line that goes from the North to the South Pole. It's called the Earth's axis of rotation. Because we're spinning, Sometimes we're facing towards the sun, and sometimes we're facing away from it. This is how we have day and night. The light can't reach around to the night side of the planet because it can only travel in straight lines. And have you ever noticed that it's colder at night? Well, that's because, as well as giving us light, the sun's rays also heat things up, including the atmosphere and us. That's why it's warmer in the day than at night when the sun has set. The thing is, as well as rotating, the Earth is also moving in a gigantic looped path around the sun called an orbit. The sun stays still and the Earth travels all the way around it and back to its original position in a little over 365 days, one year. So you've got days from the Earth spinning on its axis and years from the Earth orbiting the sun. But where did the seasons come from then? In the past, people used to have celebrations and rituals to mark the changing seasons. Now though, we know that there's nothing we can do to make the days longer or sunnier. All it takes is a little change to our model. The Earth does rotate on its axis, but that axis doesn't point straight up. It's actually leaning over to one side. This lean doesn't affect the length of the day or the year, but it does give us our seasons. Just this simple lean gives us long hot days in the summer and short cold days in the winter. Oh. Oh. 
The thing to notice is that as we go around the sun, the tilt of the Earth's axis stays in the same direction. So it looks something like this. Whoop, all the way around. When the Earth is in this position, the top half of the planet, that's what we call the Northern Hemisphere, is leaning towards the sun and it's summer. I live in England, so that's just there. And when the Earth is in this position, it's summer here. However, when we've traveled for another half a year, the top half of the planet is leaning away from the sun and it's winter here in the Northern Hemisphere. And in the Southern Hemisphere, it's summer. And if I complete the Earth's orbit, Another six months later, we're back to where we started. But here's the thing. It's not summer like this because the top bit is closer to the sun. It's actually to do with the angle that the sun's rays hit the surface. Imagine this torch is the sun. When it shines directly onto the earth from directly above the surface, you can see it makes a nice compact circle of light. But when we shine it a bit higher up, where the surface curves away, can you see how it changes? the circle gets stretched out into an oval shape, an ellipse. And even though the same amount of light is coming from the torch, it's now spread out over a larger area. That's exactly what happens with the light from the sun. Remember that in the summer, the tilt of the earth means that the northern hemisphere is pointing towards the sun, which means that hemisphere gets more of that concentrated light and heat, making the hot temperatures of summer. At the same time, the southern hemisphere curves away from the sun. So any light hitting it is really spread out and it can't heat up as much. It's dim and cold. It's time for winter. During the winter in Antarctica, it can get down to minus 60 degrees Fahrenheit and thousands of the penguins living there have to huddle together for warmth. Ah, penguins are so cool. Did I tell you how much I love penguins? When penguins are cold, they huddle together. <gasps> Head on with the penguins. Hey guys, can I join your huddle? Feeding time, come and get it, guys. Ugh, well, I don't like fish. You can huddle with me if you like. <laughs> half a year later, when the Earth has moved halfway around its orbit, the tilt now means that the southern hemisphere points towards the sun and gets more concentrated light while the north is left out in the cold. At this time, it's summer in Australia and winter in England and America. So having feasts and dancing all day won't help the seasons, but they might help you to enjoy them. The differences in sunlight and temperature are all thanks to the tilt of the earth as it goes around the sun and how the sunlight and its heat gets spread out across the surface. Pretty cool, or warm, I guess. Now, I wonder if I can make everyone feel dizzy. <laughs> Thanks for watching. For more awesome Explained with Lego videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button and comment below with what you want to see next.